There's no shortage of church consultants, people who want to provide guidance to congregations on everything from governance to stewardship to leadership to membership. Most of them write articles free of cost to show you that they are the experts in their field so that you'll know their work and then you want to pay them, they will, you'll want to pay them for their specific expertise when you need it. I admit it, I am a sucker for these articles. Maybe it's because I'm still a new minister. Maybe it's because the business of churches fascinates me. Maybe it's because I just love learning, but I end up reading them all. I have to be honest, many of them are worthless. They are saying the same things that everyone else is saying, but in their own words. Some of them are trying to be alarmist to get your attention, so you'll give them your business, of course. And some of them are stating trends that have been happening for decades, trying to pass them off as new. And some of them just bury their points in scripture that just isn't that helpful for someone who's a Unitarian Universalist. But if you read enough of them, you do pick up on some major themes that they all seem to agree on. One of the big ones is that churches or congregations that are succeeding in this modern era of religion are those that are mission driven, meaning that they have a clear mission, people know what it is, and they can even recite it. And it gives direction and meaning to their everyday operations. We here at UUCP have that. We reference it all the time. Folks quote it back to me. Teams reference it when they're trying to figure out what their role in the congregation is. We are called to be a spiritual community for our time. Theologically diverse, radically inclusive, and justice-centered. You all know it, right? It's compelling and directional, and yet still aspirational. The only problem is, is that it's not our mission. It's our vision. Now, I was a marketing consultant for 20 years before I went into ministry, and so I've worked a bit on missions and vision statements. I have to tell you that I think that this statement is our mission statement, not our vision. And the fact that we know it and quote it so much supports that. This is who we are being called to be as a congregation. It doesn't mean that we are perfectly there, but that's the for our time. And we are constantly working to live into that mission. Our actual current mission statement is welcoming all in building religious community, called to share journeys, grow in spirit, and advance justice. I mean, it's true. It's not as aspirational though. And it feels like any number of congregations, not specifically UUCP. And how many of you remember that one? A vision statement casts us into the future, setting a course for where we want to be. Our mission, on the other hand, is what we are trying to live into right now. I propose, and I have already told this to our Board of Trustees, that we officially change the spiritual community for our time statement to our mission statement, and then work on a new vision statement sometime in the future as we see who we are after this pandemic and cast our vision for who we wish to be. I'll be interested to see what you all think about that idea. But let's get back to this statement, this vision statement that may become our mission statement, to be a spiritual community for our time, theologically diverse, radically inclusive, and justice-centered. We've spent a lot of time on the, the radically inclusive part of that in the past few years and we've explored how wide it can be. We've talked about being radically inclusive to our LGBTQ folks, folks of different races, of different socioeconomic situations, and I'm super proud of our focus on the last few years on how we can be radically inclusive to folks who are more neurodiverse. 
In fact, I believe, like the brilliant puppet show that we had in our together time today, I think we can be quite proud of how inclusive we are. And yet, is it enough? In our Racial Justice Collaborative group, our beloved member Janet, J Janet Jenkins said something a few months ago that struck right to the heart of many people who heard it. Enough so that I heard it from several different people who were there. In a conversation about radical inclusion, Janet said something like, I don't need radical inclusion. I am here because of radical belonging. Wow. That statement was so insightful that it hit many of us like a ton of bricks. Like, how great of us to include people. But what we really are all looking for is to belong. Janet further illuminated her thoughts in an email exchange with me this week. She said, I don't want to belong. I already belong because I am a human being. She talked about the challenge of being othered and the work it took to accept her own inherent belonging due to her very fact of being human. And she quoted Zen priest and founder of Transformative Change, Revel, Reverend Angel Kyoto Williams, who said, belonging belongs to you. Janet's statement rang true with parts of my story as well. Many of you have heard my stories about being a chaplain in Orlando, Florida in the months following the Pulse nightclub massacre there. I was in a group of other chaplains of other faiths. There was Catholic, Seventh-day Adventist, and Episcopalians. None of them had met a queer minister before. And for all but one, being queer was a sin in their faith tradition. My very existence was a challenge to their faith. By the end of the chaplaincy, one of them said to me, apparently very proud of the growth that they were exhibiting, I accept you. Is it safe to say that I lost it? Yeah, I lost it. Accept me? He also used the word tolerate. Tolerate? Me? Oh no, that is not going to work for me. I demand to be more than accepted or tolerated. I must be fully equal to you or you are diminishing my humanity. This person and I, he was a Catholic priest, that might not surprise you, we got into a discussion where he tried to convince me that this was a big move on his part and he seemed to insinuate that I should be grateful for it. I was not. Anything besides full inclusion for me was not going to be enough. And I refused to be grateful for the shards of belonging that he was extending to me. To this day, I think they probably think that I was being unreasonable. And I have only gotten more and more entrenched in my own deserving of belonging in that group. Like Janet, my humanity is not up for discussion. I belong because I am fully human, fully divine, and fully deserving. So let's go back to our mission vision statement about being radically inclusive. At first, there was a suggestion that we change it to radical belonging. And that only makes sense if you've been part of this whole discussion all along. I still think that radical inclusion is important, thinking about who we are including in our circle and ever widening it by stretching it, stretching our minds and not changing anyone else. But I also think we need to think about inclusion and belonging on a continuum. We must start at inclusion. Who are we including? Everyone who feels like our liberal faith could be a home to them should feel included. That is not on the everyone to decide if they are part of that. That is our work to make sure that each one of us has done the work to make sure our minds and our hearts stretch wide enough to include everyone. But then we must move just 
beyond just inclusion, to that sense of belonging that we're all craving. John O'Donohue was an Irish author, poet, and Catholic priest. He does a great job of contrasting how children have this innate sense of belonging and then how adults have to work for it. He says, in contrast to how a child belongs in the world, adult belonging is never as natural, innocent, or playful. Adult belonging has to be chosen, received, and renewed. It is a lifetime's work. In fact, for many children as they are aging, and those who love that child, it, that is the most difficult time, is when they realize that they might not be included, that they don't fit in, or are actively not including, included. That time can be so difficult. Alex Capitan, who has preached here at UUCP, a UU, a spiritual activist and an intersectional educator in our faith, says this about belonging. What would it be like if you could trust unequivocally that you are valued here for the pieces of yourself that make you feel different, not despite those pieces? That in this space where there, was no, there would be nothing about you that could make people reverse their welcome or reject you from the circle of belonging. Can you imagine that? A sense of belonging so strong that nothing could make you feel like you might be rejected? Can you imagine that? Yeah, now that's radical belonging. So here is my challenge to you. First of all, see if you agree that our vision statement is really our mission statement. What do you think? Second of all, and most importantly, what I want you to take from this is to think of radical inclusion as a starting place and to think about what radical belonging looks like in this community and in the wider world. What does it mean for your sense of belonging? And how can you be part of making it so for others? How can we stretch ourselves to remove our own selves from the center of the circle and to keep stretching it wider and wider so that it includes a broader definition of who belongs? How can we offer that greatest gift of all, what we are all craving, to feel like we belong to each other? I will say that is what our purpose here is, to create that for ourselves and for each other. So might it be.